Forbes India and Indeed present Top 30 Talent Leaders of 2024. My name is Asma Sultana. I head the Global Talent Acquisition for Alorica. I'm responsible for hiring people globally and in India. I hold close to about 25 plus years of experience and I'm based out of Bangalore. I come from a family where my parents and most of my relatives come from an education background, educationist rather, I would say that. And uh, I've seen my mom, the kind of compassion she's to bring into her to her life every day by teaching her students, whether it's at home or whether in school. Looking at her, I think people, people behavior or interaction with people came to me naturally. And that's when I started pursuing a higher degree to get into this field. So long story short, I think my mom inspired me to get into human resources. I did my law and then I practiced as a lawyer as well. But um, when I was not inclined towards that field that is when i did my post graduation in human resources and took up a first job in a curry in a company called lg where i started my career as a recruiter and that's when the journey of a ta started for me uh, as a ta leader and i think i wanted to experience the whole gamut of hr just not a ta while i started my career as a recruiter and that is a time when I wanted to move into, into HR BP or a general HR. My boss, who was in my previous company, he just said, you know what, this is not going to be a cup of tea. You, I don't think so you can be an HR generalist because you're good as a TA person, you're good as an operation person, not into general HR. I think that I took it on a pinch of salt and a little bit of ego, I guess. And I wanted to prove him wrong. And I did get an opportunity to work as an HR generalist. And from there onwards for about, for the last 10, 12 years of that conversation, I've always worked as an HR strategist, HR generalist, managing talent management, so on and so forth. And then came back again into leadership hiring, came in coming back again into the TA. So. What I'm trying to tell you is, if this erstwhile supervisor of mine wouldn't have pushed me to the corner saying that you won't, you won't be able to do this. And I think I took that on my ego and I said, I will do it. And I will prove it to you that I can do it. I think that that's how my journey has been from starting with a recruiter erstwhile about 25 years back and back again as a TA leader. And I think once a TA will always remain a TA, that's what I can I have to call it out in the entire years of experience. From a challenger standpoint, I think, you know, many, many of us, um, when we get hired uh, at a senior level in a certain organization, there is an ask. There is an ask from the organization to fix recruitment, to streamline process, uh, to get everything running smoothly, yet yet meet um, the cost, optimize the cost, and ensure you know we we hire the right people at the right time. I think even I faced the similar expectation two years back when I joined Alorica as well. What I did was I think try to understand the business strategy of the of the executive leadership and assess their appetite for change and investment in talent i think see th that is more important it cannot be one way the even the management even the organization needs to be invested in the talent acquisition team and i think i i saw this coming in from my global leadership and as well as the india leadership as well who were ready to invest have a leap of faith and said and gave gave you a free hand to see how you want to shape up manage things so what i did was 
um it gave me a clear it gave me a clear parameters to shape up my thinking engage with multiple senior stakeholder within the organization as possible you know preferably in a regular basis in the business meeting to understand what the problem area is well, how do how do talent acquisition manage this better uh in a in a limited time in well within the time yet yet being extremely conservative on financial aspects as well and yet with the deliverables i think that was the big thing that i faced through because in there there has been there has been a team there has been multiple things that's going on but there was something something was missing in action for us to meet those uh targets meet those actions meet those deliverables it's just not it's just not target it's just not hiring those batches but hiring the right quality hiring the quality of people who are staying in the system who whose throughput is amplifying the business throughput as well i think that was what was missing and we tried getting into understanding the basic problem technology of course i think if we don't if we don't go hand in hand i don't think so we will reach the outcome that we are anticipating to reach the outcome for me adaptability and upskilling the existing key professionals key hr team or the recruiters is extremely important for to evolve this landscape right um, for example um, we have we never tested chatbot driven recruitment process which we introduced it i think ai is helping in a big way to manage this whole transformation this this infusion of technology is helping manage my in can, candidate initial pre screening of the application which has reduced the team's bandwidth significantly so for me i don't think so we would reach the results that we would anticipate or expect to reach the results had it been there was no technology in place yeah every every 10 years there is new technology that comes that evolves may some some sustain some don't sustain but i think as of today for the way i look at it is whether it is machine learning whether it is data analytics whether it is robotics i think all in all has helped manage the thought process the hr transformation far 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 better and we you know i have going ahead and implementing chatbot driven assessment as well which is helping manage the potential candidates better um answer initial queries guide through the early stages of the recruitment process is helping me manage the candidate experience better too instilling a right behavior with the team was utmost important um the existing team were actually doing a good job but they were lacking direction so for me what mattered was to bring the team into a collaboration and i firmly i firmly believe that there has to be a team collaboration um my leadership is rooted in sharing responsibilities and valuing each team members input whether it's a suggestion whether it's a feedback whether it is a pushing back from the team members saying that this is not doable uh, i i think i led and i stayed committed with them by leading with empathy with fairness and kindness the the three or four characters i think or or uh, drivers that helped me manage this better was i think one was being resilient it, you know it it anchors us to the core value aiding aiding them to aiding the team to overcome challenges secondly was teamwork it helped foster a spirit of cooperation and of course i think without having a clear decision i don't think so we would reach the the target or, or the the initiatives that we were planning to reach building a trust through valuing their input helped me manage this better last but not the least i think taking ownership whether it was for 
a failure or whether it was a, for a success. I think this helped manage the whole process much, much better. you know millennials you know young kids who want to get into hr but you know what they want to get into hr purely because you know they feel it is easy to get into hr because it's a stop gap till such time they reach to a different end goal i think my feedback to for such people would be don't come into hr as a stop gap arrangement unless you don't have compassion HR is all about compassion, whether it is a HR management, whether it is learning and development, whether it is comp and ben, or whether it is talent acquisition management. Without a compassion, I don't think so you would do justice in getting into an HR or a talent management role. However, if you if you if you are keen, then pursue the career with utmost seriousness and 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 be true to yourself, be true to yourself, get that compassion, you know, be passionate about any employee issues or being fair to anybody. So I don't think so. Without these qualities, you would be a qualified HR person. Forbes India and Indeed present Top 30 Talent Leaders of 2024.